We debating, going toe to toe. No holding back, I'm speaking the facts. Let me introduce you to the dope show. Nerdy D and Milwaukee Mike, bringing the energy. If you a fan of wrestling, and especially WWE, this is the casual wrestling show. Casual wrestling show. We got opinions, we letting them know. Casual wrestling show. Hey, ain't no holding back. What is up guys, this is the Casual Wrestling Community Show I am the Notorious Nerdy D alongside my guy Milwaukee Mike Tonight we talk about Hollywood Rock, the UFC callouts in WWE And the Elimination Chamber predictions But first, uh, it's your week to start Mike, what do you got? What, what, what What are you jumping off with? Yeah, yeah, so it appears that Braun Breaker and Tiffany Stratton carry the most weight When it comes to the NXT call ups recently my question to you is when the dust settles, who do you believe will have the more storied career in the end and why? So <clears throat> when I first saw this question, I thought this was going to be difficult. Then the more and more I sat down to write my notes and think about it, it's actually a fairly easy answer to me. And maybe not for the reason that everybody thinks that, that I would typically go with. To, to start off, Braun Breaker special. And he's going to be special for a long time. He's a genetic freak. He's versatile. He can be funny. He can be serious. And and, and he just literally, he has all the intangibles that you want to be the guy in a company. Problem is, men's wrestling is so crowded. There are so many top guys. There are so many guys waiting for an opportunity even when you look at people under the age of 30 years old the list is ridiculous you you look at you got names like austin theory you've got names like mjf who who possibly could come to wwe at any point in time and and take away an opportunity from braun breaker you have dominic mysterio who i don't know what his ceiling is but it it seems like he's getting better Every time he's on TV, you got Carmelo Hayes, you got Logan Paul, you got uh, Wesley, you got Ilja, uh, how you say, Il- Ilya Droganov. Ilya. So, so you have this high level of, of competition that's seemingly in waiting for this number one spot. And, and, and that's not even to mention the guys who are going to come up and, and the Creed brothers and all of these people who are just sharks in the water looking for blood. So, so I think Braun Breaker is the more talented of the two names you mentioned, but my problem is when you look at Tiffany Stratton and you look at the landscape of women's wrestling at 24 years old, she's been called up to SmackDown. I, I think she wins a title before the year's over, and I think she just gets going before Braun Breaker is able to kind of hit that full stride. And when you look at the landscape of women's wrestling, you you still have Charlotte, you still have you know Becky, you still have Bailey, but I think they're closer to being at the end than they are the beginning. You don't see the women's wrestlers go as long as the men who go into their fifties and, and try to hold on to it forever. Braun Breaker's still competing with guys like CM Punk and Bobby Lashley to to get to that top spot. Whereas I think Tiffany Stratton, she's got to look around and she goes, okay, it's like Roxanne Perez. It's it's Cora Jade. And and I think her skill set is better suited all around to represent the company. I, I think the only name that Tiffany Stratton looks at is probably Rhea Ripley. And you go, yeah, she's top dog. She's probably going to end up being the GOAT. But number two is not bad. It's not bad to be Scottie Pippen to, to Rhea Ripley's Michael Jordan. And, and I think that, you know, women's wrestling, the, the popularity is growing quickly. There, there's like, there's a call for more women's wrestling. We're going to get more women's matches on WrestleMania than we've probably seen in a long time. I assume we're going to get a women's mid card title sooner rather than later. So I, I believe for, for when the dust settles at the end of the day, just by circumstance, I think it's Tiffany Stratton. I think she ends up with the, the, the better career overall, even though I think Braun Breaker is more talented. Yeah, I, you know, when I thought about this question, I had similar thoughts, you know, compared to you. Um, I think with Tiffany, you look at the women's landscape, and I think that's where you kind of have to make your judgment call, right? Because there's far less women, talented women, in that division than there is compared to men. And with men, I think there's a pecking order, right? Mm-hmm. The top ain't changing anytime soon. And, you know... <laughs> You'd assume Braun probably 
gets some kind of mid card title, you know, in, in terms of his first title, you know, uh, uh, win. But um, Tiffany's got it, man. She's got the mic skills. I think they could be a little bit better. I think uh, last night she was kind of a little timid. Yeah. But you could you could tell like the personalities there mm -hmm. and the, the athleticism is there. She's got it in the ring. Uh, but she's got the look. Um, so yeah, I, I I would assume that when the dust settles, I think they'll both be storied. But I think in terms of who accomplishes more, I think I'm going to roll with Tiffany. Yeah, yeah, and I, like you said, I I think that like with Tiffany, I look at her and I see the best of of a bunch of different people. I see the athleticism of Charlotte. I see the ability to talk like Becky, and 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 that's not to say it's not going to take her two or three months to get rolling. That shit's got to be nerve wracking. She's 24 years old. Yeah. And, and and like you said, the pecking order on the men's side, look at Austin Theory. There was a time we thought, oh, shit, he's going to be the youngest world champion of all time. His ceiling is, is you know, there is no ceiling. And then all of a sudden, it's just derailed because the reality is, like you said, there's a pecking order. And, and the problem is you're not just competing not only with the people in your age bracket, but you've got guys from other companies who can jump ship at any time. You've got... Guys like Bobby Lashley, who seemingly can do it forever. Guys like R Truth, not not that he's competing with R Truth, but the just the freak nature of R Truth at fifty two years old, watching him and going, he's maybe one of the most athletic people on the roster. Yeah. You, there's just so much to contend with. I'm with you on that. I, I think that the pecking order and just circumstance makes it improbable that even if he has the perfect career path for him, I still think it just doesn't look like what it looks like. For Tiffany. For sure. All right, Mike, with the big swerve in the plans by Triple H as far as turning the rock heel and, and, and kind of laying into this Hollywood rock for, for the story of, of the bloodline and Cody Rhodes, on Friday it appeared to me that the rock might have been knocking off a little bit of ring dust when it comes to character work. Uh, character work. My question for you, are you 100% sure that the rock will be able to work the Hollywood rock uh, version of his character all the way through WrestleMania. I think you would assume that there's going to be limited appearances by The Rock, right? He's not going to be on every week, so that kind of factors into my my answer here. I think that he can because of the limited, you know, the limited appearances. I found myself on Friday not really enjoying that promo that he cut. I think it was a lot of the same same old stick where it's, you know, line after line that we've heard before and, you know, throwing a couple insults and there was no like there was no further storytelling in terms of what we have going on currently. And I think that could be an issue as we continue on to WrestleMania. Like I'm still wondering what he whispered to Cody when Cody gave up his WrestleMania spot. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of stuff that has to be answered here, and I'm not sure that I've seen Rock be a complete storyteller before. I think he's been a good shit talker, uh -huh. but I don't know if he's been a good storyteller on the mic, and I think that's where I'm kind of like iffy. I, obviously, he's been in Hollywood now for years, so if there's anybody that could adapt, I would assume it's him, right? But the Hollywood thing... I think with the swerve, I think, you know, obviously the fans changed this whole tra trajectory of where this thing's going. I I guess all I can really say is that I'll sit back and, and see what happens. Um, but with the limited appearances, I think that we can kind of get something going towards WrestleMania, but it remains to be seen. So, so my opinion on this is I think The Rock's been put in almost an impossible situation because we know his talent, right? We know he's capable of doing all these things. But I think he's being asked to almost subliminally play two different characters. He's got to play the bad guy. He's got to be Hollywood Rock. But he's got to protect a certain amount of this Roman Rock mystique that that we still know is coming later on. My my concern is that there is Mike Rust. We it's got it's been twenty plus years since The Rock had to get in the ring and play a character. Every other time he's been in wrestling, he's been Dwayne Johnson, and he's came out and like you said. He's the king of, of the slogan. He's the king of the one-liner. He can and, and even when he stumbles, he can always bring it back by hitting him with a Cody crybaby or you know your herpes or something like that. He always gets the pop that brings the crowd back. But I'm worried a little bit because we haven't 
to to play a full on character for the rock in wrestling it feels a little bit unnatural at this point it feels like he's gotten used to just coming back and being the big lovable guy who who gets to go off script and say what he wants and it felt a little bit like this time that hey you you've got to work within the confines of the story you you've got to move this along and like you said he struggled to really push that forward i i know when he was doing the promos with cena Cena called him out for writing things down on his arm. That's how hard this is, is that you do need those little tricks. And now Cena exposed that, so you can't lean on that. And when he went into the whole 49ers Super Bowl, uh, I get what he was doing. And, and I think Prime Rock pulls that off, and it's perfect. But he stumbled. And then I think he got in his own head a little bit. And and it it became this weird, like, the fuck is he saying? Like Cody yeah. did, Cody did earn his opportunity back. You're you're doubling down on Cody's point of view. I'm with you. I think he's going to show up. I think the Rock's committed on this run. I I think. I mean, were they not? They're advertising him this Friday. No, are they? I, 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 I thought so. I I thought okay. I saw in commercials they're advertising. I think he's going to show up. I think he's his investment in the company. He proved me wrong. I think he's here for this. Okay. I think this is his main focus right now. I think he probably knows this is the last one he's got in the chamber. But, yeah, I mean, I got 60% confidence that he pulls this off. I think at a certain a certain point, if it's not working, he aborts, and he just goes back to being Dwayne. And here's, here's the reality about Dwayne Johnson. He's a little bit of an egomaniacal maniac anyway, so he can be a bad guy. I don't think we needed Hollywood Rock. The Rock is a little bit out of touch with the real world. So yeah. if he just comes in and plays Hollywood elitist, I I think people turn on him anyway. I don't think I think there's a little bit of the rock protecting his ego by the fans turned on him as yeah. Dwayne Johnson. And I think he's going, well, I'll give them the rock so they can be mad at, at the rock. And, and I think that's a little bit of what's what's happening here. What one other thing that I think bothered me about the promo was at so, I don't want to use like this analogy, but it felt like a dick measuring contest between him and Roman, right? Like at some point, they're going to have to establish who the alpha is in that ring and have them talk and go back and forth. And I think there is a fear that The Rock will overshadow Roman. And so do they, you know, is this by, by choice that they're kind of keeping them apart? Because it was a weird kind of storyline bit for Roman to bring him out, but then they don't really acknowledge each other or talk to each other. The Rock just cuts a weird promo to me. That that felt a, a little bit weird to me, like a power struggle. Yeah, I, I was actually going to ask a question on uh, on that. It, it seems to me that like they're making Roman look small so far. Yeah. And, and, and I'm concerned about that because that's supposed to be your main event guy this year. And if he's looking small going into your biggest main event of, you know, all time, they're, you know, whatever they claim. Yeah. I, I'm concerned about that as <laughs> as if this is going to be the rock <laughs> show and you guys are the supporting cast. And I don't think that's how I don't think that's how this should shape it. it it's cool right now. Yeah. It's cool right now. Exactly. But but we can't go into mania with that being the, the, the circumstance. Yeah, I think that was my uncomfortableness with the whole situation was was like. It feels like Rock has to fall in line for the story to work. Even yeah. if he's going to turn on Roman at some point and be the alpha, he almost has to acknowledge Roman as head of the table. And I and I know there's like the subliminals of like he pointed at the at Roman when he said what he said. And I get that's fun. But at some point for the casual wrestling fan, you you're gonna have to line this out where Roman is the guy. Cause you're right. Right now, when I look at this, Rock is the guy. And it almost feels like Cody and Roman is the sideshow to The Rock. And if that's going to be the case, make him the referee. Get him as involved as you can in this thing. But if, if yeah, if he's just going to go in there and, and, and just one-line us to death, I, I don't know how good that is for the business. It'll be fun. It'll, be, it'll yeah. be real fun to watch. I just don't know how good that is for the business. I agree. I agree. All right, what you got? So last night we saw appearances from TKO's other promotions, specifically Michael Chandler from the USC. How did you or do you feel about the crossover of promotions as we seen Chandler call out Conor McGregor last night? And do you believe we'll ever see a crossover event in the future between UFC and the WWE? So this is interesting. I think this, I like, 
you have to wear two different hats to answer this question. I, I first put on my WWE hat. And with my WWE hat, I go, that's fuck. That's gold. That's great. Like, you got Michael Chandler to come on Monday Night Raw and call out Conor McGregor? I, I mean, you get now you're getting the, the wrestling news cycle and the MMA news cycle. Like, there's nothing to complain about as a wrestling fan, as, as somebody in WWE. <coughs> all positives. I don't see I don't see any problem with, with any of that. I do want to go on record as saying I think I said a long time ago TKO was going to eventually stick their hands into WWE. Endeavor and TKO. I know that the IWC and a lot of people have said, oh, they're hands off. They don't get involved in companies. I I think with WWE it's a little different cuz WWE's a live it's it's a live microphone. You can do and say what you want. And I think they saw it as Conor McGregor's playing some games. Let's make a fool out of him on TV. And WWE's the perfect place to do that. Now, take off WWE hat, put on UFC hat. Dana White, what the fuck are you letting go on here? Like, what is happening? You, Dana White has worked so hard to draw a very distinct line between what is professional wrestling, fake fighting, and what is the UFC. And all of a sudden, we have Chandler call out McGregor in WWE and now, I don't know, are they doing this at WrestleMania? Like, why not? <laughs> let's put them in the ring together. Even if it's not, even if it's just promotion for a UFC fight, let's do it because it works. But if I'm Dana White, did, did Dana approve this or did this just kind of go on? Chandler show up at wrestling and they're like, give him a mic. Let him, let him talk his shit. It, it's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, so I think a lot of this has to do with Vince being gone, honestly, because I know Dana and Vince didn't necessarily align with a lot of stuff. That. So I, I think I think you're going to see crossover now since Vince is no longer associated with the company. And I loved it last night, man. He gave me, you know, I was watching Raw. We're hitting kind of a dead point. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, I'm all juiced up. I'm like, oh, shit, this yeah. is awesome. You I was ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of like an actual crossover event, I listen, man, <clears throat> I could I could see down the line wrestlemania having a ufc fight and i could see it kind of being sort of like a a, a war game situation where they have a ring and then they have an octagon right so i miss and, then i misread the question so you're talking about intertwining in a single building an event yeah, together yeah that's that's yeah like that's interesting like i i feel like you could sell out a lincoln financial field and you can get a crossover where you get ufc and wwe fans in one building and maybe you have, you know, a card with WWE, and then you have maybe one or two UFC fights. Maybe just one UFC fight where it's like yeah. a mega fight, yeah. right? I, I, honestly, I'm not throwing that out the window because I, at this point now, I think anything's on the table. That's interesting. I read so when when you when you wrote that question to me, I interpreted it differently. I interpreted it as like a weekend of a UFC fight and wrestling in the same city at the same time. And I thought, I don't know why that would benefit anybody, right? Because yeah. wrestling's a lot of money. UFC's a lot of money. I don't know that I'm ever going to go to a WWE event and go, I'll drop another 250 on going to see UFC. Now, what you just said is extremely interesting, extremely intriguing, and I think it works only going the direction of UFC happening in WWE. Like, if all of a sudden they announced – some kind of major UFC match for WrestleMania, I, I'm with you. I think people would be hyped as shit. Like, it works. You have enough of the, you just need the right kind of guy, the Colby Covington, the, Maz, the Masvidal, someone like that who's going to talk their shit and play it up and, and be a part of the spectacle. Chandler and, and McGregor, you don't waste it at, at WrestleMania. That's, you know, that's going to sell a, a UFC fight. But something of that level... Right. Yeah, you introduce WWE fans into, hey, this is another product that, while is different, does have some similarities and can have some shit talking. I like that. I didn't think of it in the, and they, they did that, right? Like, if I think back to the Attitude Era, they, at one point, they were having like weird cage matches on yeah, the side. I mean, you've seen like boxers and stuff come in before. So, I, I, you know, why not dip your toes and see? I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. I, I like that. I, I did not think of of doing something like that, that that's interesting or, or letting someone come in and beat the shit out of riddle rehire him hey. and, and do it again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right mike so the last couple of episodes of monday night raw smackdown 
We've seen them flash the WWE 2K24 ratings on the side of the screen. And it, it's hard for me because they pop up. I go, oh, cool. And then they go away. Unless I see them all together, they don't really mean anything to me. So I thought it would be fun for us to take 10 guys, 10 girls, and give them our ratings. And then I did find a list of semi-confirmed ratings for some of these people that we can put them up against. But I dropped uh, 10 guys. We did Roman, Seth, Gunther, Logan Paul, Braun Breaker, CM Punk, Dom, R-Truth, LA Knight, Damian Priest. For no particular reason, just I thought it was a good mix of people. Uh, for yeah. women, we got Bailey, Bianca, Charlotte, Becky, Rhea, EO, Nia, Jade, Liv, and Tiffany Stratton. You want to just go, we'll go back and forth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah All yeah. right, let's start with Roman Reigns. What? Where do you put Roman Reigns? I, that's a 99. 90, I mean, right, me. right. You can, I mean, that's the yeah. standard. That yeah, is, yeah. That, I got 99 too. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. He sets the bar, no. and then you base everybody else outside of that. All right, yeah, Seth 100%. Rollins. I have Seth at 96. 96. I got 97. So we're okay. right. We're our thinking's right in line there. I, I think that I'm the same way. I think, and I think he's the second highest in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that yeah, Roman's the guy, and then you give just a little breathing room and you put Seth there. So then yeah. Gunther. This one's this I've one's Gun interesting. Gunther I have at 94. I have 95. I have 94. Okay. So we're just, you know, our, our scale's just right slightly there. different. Now, yeah. on the, I, I believe Gunther's been announced, right or no? Okay. No, he sure. has I, not. I, Gunther I, has not okay. been announced. Okay. Okay. So let's go Logan Paul. Logan, I have 88. So do I. Same. Okay. And what okay. they have, they have Logan, I think, at 90. Yeah. yeah I'm not mad at it, but, you know, I, <clears> I, I, I think that's kind of. Tooting his horn a little bit, but whatever. The, my problem is I have no problem with it being a 90. It's then how you grade the people around him becomes the problem to me. Like, if he's yeah. going to be a 90, then there's got to be a lot of 91s and 92s because sure. I don't know he's better than a, a lot of people. Braun Breaker. Braun, I have an 84. I have 86, and I think I'm being generous. I think Okay. I think I just – my problem is, <laughs> is you take that overall number – and you have to make it work statistically. Yeah. And so speed, he's what? Like 99. Fucking athleticism, 100. he's 99, yeah. right? So yeah. I start trying to make it work. You've got to take away some random things to bring that number down. I think yeah. that's why that's why I gave him 86 is because statistically, I couldn't figure out charisma. He's top. What is yeah. he bad at? Uh, I just think, um, I think there's some timing with him that I think is off a little bit. Okay, uh, okay. And I, I haven't watched that, him enough. Yeah, I think timing and then like technique wise, I don't think he's necessarily the cleanest. I think okay. he's just he really depends on his athleticism a lot. So, okay. Um, yeah, I, I compare him. I, I, I compared him to like Seth and like what I think that Seth is like kind of the standard in terms of like all around wrestler, right? Yeah. For me. Yeah. So I think that's where I kind of came up with eighty four for him. That makes sense. I get it. I I haven't. So I can tell you, like from the casual point of view. My real experience is Royal Rumble. That's where I got to I got see, you. like, he's flying around and shit. I'm like, holy, yeah, yeah, yeah. holy cow, this guy's amazing. Yeah, so yeah. I haven't watched enough NXT to know. All right, uh, CM exactly. Punk. I have CM Punk at 90. I've got 89. I think that's okay. – I, I like that range, 90, 89 for, for CM Punk. He, he's still yeah. got some stuff to prove, but he's done enough in his career to where warrant that response. I'm, I'm with yeah. you there. Yeah. Dirty Dom. I have him at 82. Yes, I, 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 and, and I I struggled with this one because I at first I had him at eighty five and I'm like, I feel like that's giving him a little bit too much. Yeah, because he's I mean, he, he's improved. Yeah, but I I, I don't think he's like eighty five and up. I think there's like a a, a tier right there, right? Yeah, I think for me, I, I kind of feel like the opposite of Braun Breaker, like. For for every statistic I can put Braun at the, the top of, with Dom, I go, other than, like, charisma and getting booed, I don't know what Dom does extremely well. Now, he doesn't do anything. I don't think he does anything particularly bad. But I think 82, yeah. for me, that's not a bad score, especially for a guy no. his age and a guy who really hasn't accomplished that much. I, I think that's a yeah. fair score. Our uh, yeah, yeah. truth Our truth man. I just I love that dude, man. So I, you know, too. I I I, I, I want to give him the highest number, but but I was being I was being real. I went seventy eight. 
I haven't been in 87. What am I, do- what am I doing, man? I'm, I think it's exactly what you said. It's just like, I just can't put him in the 70s. Like, he deserves so much more. But you're I you're agree. more accurate with your score. It's just, to I me, it's it. like, it's that thing. Like, I, I want him to be a champion. I want so much more for him because... He's the most entertaining thing on TV week in and week out. He saves hands Monday down. Night Raw. Yeah, I agree. One and, hands and, down. You know, it, it, ah, shit. I yes, you're right, but I I went with my heart. Eighty seven. We'll, we'll we'll go with eighty seven. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that. L A Night. L A Night. I have him at ninety. I have eighty nine. Nine. So we're okay. we're right in line again on that. We're we're thinking in the same here. It's, just kind of same CM Punk thing, right? I don't know if he's ascended. I think past ninety, you've you're you're big time. You're a champion. Yeah. You're, you're a guy, and I think he's on the cusp of that. But he's got to get over the hill. He's lost a little bit of steam. Yeah, I agree. And they got Damian Priest, eighty eight. Same thing. Same thing. I think that's a perfect score for Damian Priest. I agree. It's like right there on 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 getting to that 90 level but you got to cash in maybe once he cashes in and has to run as champion he steps up but 88 is perfect yep then we'll, we'll zoom through the women here we got bailey okay. nine 90 i have 88 but i think 90 is fair i think it, the women are hard because i want to put them all in the 90s just based yeah. on on the the lack of of like abundance of talent bianca belair bianca belair i have at 96 interesting i have 92 and i think it's okay. just i think i was trying to do that based on like if you were rating in madden i don't think right now she's at her high okay i wish these these numbers would change like through the year yeah. like madden and i think yeah. right now bianca's kind of in kind of like a, a chill period but I, That's fair. I have no problem with 96 i think she is overall a 96 uh charlotte yeah. flair uh, 95. I have 95 as well on that. Uh, Becky Lynch. 95. Same. I have 95 on that. Rhea Ripley. 98. Okay. I'm with that. I have 96, okay. but I like that. Okay. I yeah, like she's up. I like elevating her to one spot below Roman. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, she's the top of the game. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, she's, she's, she's the one. Mm-hmm. And so 98 makes sense. I did 96, I think, just because I didn't want to put that much separation between her and Charlotte, but it's there. It, it's yeah. very there. Yep. Okay, EO Sky. I have her 87. I have 88. I think okay. that's that's the right range for that. And that's weird that that's our champion right now. And She's kind of low. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jade Cargill. This is an interesting one to me. So I I wanted to be mindful i gave her a 75 and that's just because i have not seen we haven't seen anything so but we know that there's stuff there's something there yeah it's like you can't you can't totally jip her but you can't totally like put her on a pedestal either so i, I went 75 <laughs> for like you know three quarters of a dollar you know we, we're all with that that's interesting i did what wwe probably wouldn't do and i like stole from her aew career in my head Okay. And I thought if you're going to put her in a video game and she doesn't have that much yet, I go ahead and stick her in and make her feel big. I did uh, 89. Okay. I thought okay. You, you stick her in there and you got to kind of make her feel big time. 75. You don't want her getting her ass kicked in the video game every week. Everybody trying to play with Jay Carkill getting her ass whooped. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. I so, didn't think about that. I I struggled with it too though because there was a point in time when I was thinking in the seventies just because you have no no information but I think from the marketing standpoint of WWE you gotta you you have to put okay. her in at least you know the top ten of women right now okay uh, Liv Morgan Liv Morgan I have her at eighty five so do I so I think that's perfect perfect that's, for her. that's and that's gonna piss people off but that's the Liv Morgan ceiling. That that's where she is. I mean, it's, she you know, start- she's been. Go ahead, go. She's been gone for a minute, you know, and mm. she's been champion. But you know, it, it, the, my socks are still on. She hasn't knocked them off. So she came out and cut her promo <laughs> on Monday. I was just like, "That's live." Like yeah, kind of screechy. Yeah. It's it's not great. It's not horrible. It's it's eighty five, yeah. and I think yeah. that's her ceiling. I don't know that she ever goes far beyond that. 
And yeah, that's okay. You can you can be that. You make a career out of eighty five. Then yeah. Tiffany Stratton. I put I put her at eighty five as well, and I, I think that's just that there's a ceiling there, and she hasn't hit it yet. So I, I wanted to be fair. I didn't want to you know boost her too high too soon, but she, I, I feel like her making is a, a at least the eighty five. I have eighty four, which is okay. the same line of thinking, same reasoning. Just that was where I settled on it. I think. All the potential, but she has the prove it. She doesn't have the AEW career to rely on like yeah. I went with with Jay. So, yeah, yeah, I think we're pretty in line there. Yeah. <clears throat> Looking at uh, WWE's ratings, Rhea Ripley's a 96. Okay. Logan's a 90. Gunther's a 90. He is on here. Okay. So, Gunther's okay. a 90. Jay Uso's a 90. That's interesting. Sure. I don't know if I put Jay and Gunther on the same playing field. No. Drew McIntyre's no. an 89. Okay. That's interesting. Um, huh. Other notables Dirty Doms in 83 Miz in 81 okay. Tiffany Stratton a 79 Okay um, R-Truth a 67 Fuck these guys Wow Fuck these guys Wow <laughs> They did him dirty That's bad <sighs> Alright let's end the show here Mike Royal yeah. Rumble was one of the most memorable Premium live events in the past five years i'd say looking forward to the elimination chamber and what is actually announced for the card on a scale of one to ten how excited are you for this card are you waking up at 5 a.m to watch it or 4 a.m wherever whatever time it is where you are and uh predictions i'm at like a five man and i feel man i feel bad saying that because it shouldn't be that way on the way to road to wrestlemania but I, I think a lot of it has to do with the time thing. Yeah. I think this was if this was a regular time zone, I might be a little bit higher on it. But I consider the time zone. I consider how the matches are pretty predictable as well. How do you get excited? About? I mean, the only two match, the only two matches that like you can really say, "Oh, I wonder what's going to happen," are the elimination chamber matches, right? Yeah, and I think. I think one is pretty predictable. The other, I think, yesterday got a little bit interesting, which mm-hmm. is the women. Mm-hmm. But the, but the men, I think we all assume Drew's gonna. Yep. Drew's gonna I, win that. I think our, our predictions are gonna be pretty in line. I'm like you. I'm four five excitement. Probably not. I you know there was a part of me that was gonna get up. I'll probably just watch it later in the day. I think yeah. this feels like a glorified press conference for WrestleMania. It feels like just tying up the last little ribbons that need to just be put into place to go into WrestleMania. I I don't know. I mean, there's a part of me that thinks, do they blow the roof off and The Rock shows up during this Grayson Waller thing? Uh, Obviously, it's going to happen. I mean, either Roman or him are going to show up. So you think so? See, I I can see a a situation where it just ends up being Grayson Waller and theory talking shit to Cody and Seth. And we get some squash match between them. I could see WWE doing that. It's a long way to travel to cut a promo. That's true for for Roman and the rock. And, and while I think, you know, there was the talk of, of Australia wanting the rock. I how committed if he shows up in fucking Australia, I he gets my respect. Right? Like, like yeah. we're good to go. As far as like you said, Rhea versus Nia. That's come on, man. You're not taking the title off of Rhea no. a month no. before and putting it on Nia. Like, we, come on, we know better than that. That's a pretty right. locked in thing. And and you're not doing it in Australia of all places. Like the no, place a, will, the no, place no. will go crazy. Yeah, I agree. Uh, tag team title. That's I mean that's a weak tag team match. Yeah, that's I, I mean, that's I mean, come on now. That, that I mean, we're not if 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 other tag established tag teams couldn't get it done. <laughs> no yeah, I mean, like this is just a match on the card to me. Like this is even if this was on Monday Night Raw and this is nothing against Butch. And I don't even really know the other guy's name, which is probably sad. Is it is Tyler it, Bates? Tyler Bates, right? Yeah. 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 It, I don't know. I just I, to me, this just feels like setting up for DIY to win the titles at WrestleMania. That, that, that's yeah, all it says. Tying up ribbons, getting the judgment day. They needed to be established as a tag team because they don't defend. And yeah. here we go. Uh, yeah. what, do we, what do we got? Uh, yeah, men's chamber. It's It's got to be Drew. I, I, I say Drew. 
like 95 percent, and i have a five percent for randy i mean those are the only two possibilities and it's i mean at the way drew's been built come on now it's just it's gonna be drew yeah i, I feel like he separated himself and that that we're all every i think everybody's pretty okay with doing seth drew again yeah and sometimes i would get tired of it but i think drew has established himself in the last couple of weeks as he's the only guy who really deserves that shot especially knowing that it was going to be cm punk i think that's the next best thing yeah i agree and then the women's chamber you like you said there is some it, doubt but is there some doubt it's becky right it, 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 the, fucking, like, the press conference in vegas had her come yeah. out and say that like the man is always on top and shit like like to me that felt like all right they solidified this match who who else? I, it's not Bianca. I think so. No. I think Bianca and Tiffany lock up inside this this chamber, and we're gonna get yeah. Bianca and Tiffany at WrestleMania. I think that's what we're getting. I think there's yeah. Some, look, Bianca's not gonna be left off the WrestleMania card. No, but no, gonna, by no means. And I think she'll have a prominent match with Tiffany Stratton. They'll build it up to to be a thing. I think I, that's my belief. I don't know for sure. I gotta think about that one, but I, I know for sure Bianca will be at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, then uh, Liv's not winning. No, and then you know they brought back Raquel last night. A lot of people are like, "Oh, it could be, it could be Raquel." And again, We've I seen think Raquel, it. We've I think seen Raquel it. got Raquel got entered into the chamber to have some big, you know, muscular, strong spots. You know, kind of and, and to put doubt. Bit. I think it was literally yeah. to put doubt in people's mind, right? Because yeah, I, I I literally think that up until maybe a week ago, that was Jade Cargill. That was her spot. And they had big spots planned, and they go, "Oh yeah. shit, we need someone big and strong who can do that stuff." And Raquel's yeah. perfect, but but yeah, you don't, Raquel, you can't build a month build around Raquel Rodriguez and sell that match. You yeah. Becky and and Rhea has been building up, and then Grayson Waller effect with Seth and Cody I, that kind of feels like a cop out to me. Yeah, so I guess like my real predictions for Elimination Chamber are you going to start getting a lot of these WrestleMania matches established, right? I think in the Chamber, you're going to see some interaction between LA Knight and Logan Paul. I think we'll get that kind of squared away. Yeah, set yeah, it up for definitely. WrestleMania. I think, I think during the Waller effect, maybe Jay and Jimmy kind of get into it at some point. Would make sense. Out, that right? would definitely make sense. And then, uh, I don't know, who else could we put together for wrestlemania at this point um you know bianca and tiffany possibly like you mentioned uh, my only question, what do you so if, if it's not bianca and tiffany what do you do with bianca i i feel like it was gonna be i felt like it was gonna either be a tag with jade see or i think they've hurt. pulled back on jade i think that yeah i they might have seen something and gone not yet She's not, yeah. not yet. Yeah. We're, we're building yeah. towards it, but let's not put her on. That's rough being put at WrestleMania for your first kind of spotlight. Yeah. You've got to sell the show. I think Jade may be Monday after uh, WrestleMania coming out and attacking whoever's champion. I can see that. I, can see I that. like that. But yeah, with Bianca, I don't. <sighs> Bianca, Naomi. Mm. I, I guess. I guess that's the intrigue for Elimination Chamber, right? Yeah, there it like, is. There, there's your reason to watch. Yeah, what's Bianca going to do? Uh, <laughs> you got anything else? Uh, how much? I mean, we got we got a little bit here. Uh, I was just curious. It, it, you can answer it however you want. Have you considered what the landscape of wrestling would be without the bloodline being prominent anymore? Ooh. Uh you're saying so we, what what's going to happen post bloodline because i think we're i think we're kind of coming close to i, I do the too. book maybe we hit that on next episode just to no, we, can we, tease we, it. we can talk about it for a couple minutes uh okay i think i i i think we've seen it i think we kind of know what it is it's jay uso being jay uso i think jimmy will find a more prominent role i think solo will get out of being a goon and I think there will be life without Roman Reigns. And I think it will be weird for a little bit. But I don't think it's going to be the big overreactive like hole that we thought. When Roman leaves, there's going to be this hole. I think it's it's kind of like the NBA when LeBron James leave. It, it's not going to be one guy. It's going to be a collective of a bunch of people who are going to have to step up. And parity is better 
for the business. I think when you have these long runs of Roman Reigns, you mentioned it last week, we're going to need the title to bounce around. We're going to need to kind of get through this log of, of guys who deserve to be champion. Drew, Seth, Punk, you know, Damian. We're going to have to run. So I think, I think it will be weird. There will be kind of a recovery period. But I think that you'll see Solo, Jimmy, those guys will all benefit from it. That, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I I think similarly to you. Um, I think it's more of one of those things like you won't know you'll miss it until it's gone, right? I agree with that. And, and you know, I've seen a lot of reaction videos from last night where, where Jimmy came and, you know, cost Jay the title and people were kind of disappointed and everything. But it's like, think about the times when we're not going to get this. Oh, and yeah. This kind of, you I, know, like. I it, loved it. it. it yeah, it, it's one of those. And you. I, the other day, I just kind of I found myself on YouTube, and they had like a a video of like the Bloodline story, and it's just like we've been on a ride the last three years, and I don't think people really fully grasp that quite yet. No, I and agree. It was just, and it was crazy to kind of watch, and like I don't know that there'll ever be a story like this ever told again in wrestling. I don't think so. I'd be there's just too much that has to line up. Too many family members being. At the time, you know, you I, what gets kind of forgotten here is the Usos were the are to me the greatest tag team of all time. Yeah. So you you're talking about the greatest tag team being aligned with the maybe most dominant. I wouldn't say greatest, but most dominant main superstar the WWE's ever seen, and that all lining up with Paul Heyman, yeah. who is the greatest manager in my point. Of, that will be hard to ever do again, and and to to I keep agree. people's attention. For this, like like you said, I don't even remember what the fuck happened three years ago. Like in my life, it was the, it was the SummerSlam. I'm talking about yeah, in my life. SummerSlam. In my life, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember yeah. the Bloodline stuff. I don't remember what happened three years ago in my life. So that's yeah, how yeah, long yeah. it's had us interested. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. That that's definitely crazy. That's all the time we have this week for the Casual Wrestling Show. Make sure to like and share this episode as much as you can. As a member of the Casual Wrestling community, feel free to screen record and clip your favorite part of the show on any social media platform. As always, I am Nerdy D. That is Milwaukee Mike, and we will see you guys next week. Hey, you better bring it if we debate and going toe to toe. No holding back, I'm speaking the facts. Let me introduce you to the dope show. Nerdy D and Milwaukee Mike, bringing the energy. If you a fan of wrestling, and especially WWE, this is the casual wrestling show. Casual wrestling.